welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Due to the short nature of our presentation, we will not be fielding questions. Today's session is being recorded. Look for an email within a few hours after the session ends for a link to the recording. I would like to introduce our facilitator for today, Hugh Alley. Hugh Alley has worked over 30 years helping organizations improve their performance. He has run four different organizations, including three manufacturing plants, as well as several distribution centers. Hugh has taught core skills to over 900 frontline leaders, mostly using the training within industry TWI models. He has taught job instruction skills to over 200 people across a wide range of industries. His forthcoming book, Becoming the Supervisor, Productivity Press, June 2020, helps readers recognize the skills frontline leaders need, including the skill of instruction. With that, I will hand it over to Hugh. Thanks so much, Skylar. Um, welcome to the webinar. Uh, I'm really looking forward to today uh, as we talk about uh, retooling your production in a hurry, how TWI job instruction can help you respond to COVID-19 opportunities. I want to do two things uh, to start. Uh, one is to acknowledge uh, that I'm making this presentation from the traditional and unceded lands of the Musqueam and Squamish speaking peoples uh, in the southwest corner of what you would normally know as British Columbia. Uh, and the other thing that I want to do is um, just hope that you are all well and that your families are all well in the midst of all the uh, infection that's going around the continent uh, uh, with COVID-19. Uh, it's an unnerving time for a lot of people. I want to acknowledge that uh, it's distracting to all of us. So um, what I want to do uh, today is uh, go through uh, some experience that I had with um, needing to retool in a hurry or uh, really adjust in a hurry. I've been reflecting on those experiences, came up with three different things that were insights uh, that I wanted to share with you and hope that they might help you as you uh, adjust to the opportunities that are presented uh, to your business uh, by the COVID-19 situation, opportunities that are really designed to help us all stay healthier. So um, obviously the need for, to be able to introduce new products uh, is pretty strong. A new product is needed quickly, and whether it's masks or gowns or ventilators or sanitizers, uh, the need is significant. Uh, the health of the healthcare workers uh, really depends on that availability. And we've all heard the stories of people needing to share or not having enough. Uh, pretty unnerving if you are one of those healthcare workers. Um, so there's a huge need in our community for that. Um, we've run into this problem before, and the training with industry model and job instruction have solved two significant problems before. One is adapting to the growth of lots and lots of new workers. And the other is trying to shorten the time for uh, training. So this, this slide uh, shows uh, on the left side, the growth of shipyard workers in the United States uh, in the early years of the Second World War. You can see they started out at 50,000 in 39. By 1942, we were at 650,000 people working in shipyards. Many of them had never seen a ship before they started. And so you can just imagine the challenge of getting that, just the straight volume of people up to speed the other thing that happened is that uh, a lot of the skills took a long time to train in the traditional way. And lens grind grinders were one of those examples where in 1939, if you wanted to become a lens grinder, you could look at five years uh, of training and apprenticeship before you wound up being able to be let on your own. 
um, as you can see in this slide, that would have taken you to 1944 and the war would have been over. Um, and so people who were looking at that problem said, there's gotta be a better way. And indeed there was. And within a year, they had got that uh, training period down to five months. Go forward another year and change. And there were companies that were now able to take somebody off the street and in five weeks have them grinding lenses correctly at production rates. And in 1943, 44, there was one company that actually got it down to five days. So when you see the kind of accomplishments that were uh, possible with the job instruction module from training within industry, um, it's really impressive. And it certainly harks, is echoed in the need for ramp up and shortening of time uh, that we face today. Some of you may not be familiar with what training within industry is and what's just uh, what's distinctive about job instruction. So I thought it would be worth um, going over that. And if you're familiar with this, uh, my apologies for the, the review. But there's six th distinctive things about job instruction compared to other kinds of instruction. The first uh, distinction is that in job instruction, the information about the job is dumped into three buckets, steps, key points, and reasons. And that organization of the information makes it easier to learn. The second distinctive element is job instruction explicitly at the start says, we've got to put the learner at ease and get them interested in what they're doing. It's not enough just to say, here's the job. You need to explain, how does it all fit together? Third distinctive element is that you show the, um, the, the task to the person four times and each time more information is added so they don't have to absorb everything at once. Fourth distinctive element is that the learner then does the job four times at a minimum and they start repeating the, some of the information back to their instructor. You compare that to a conventional instruction where the guy the instructor may say, uh, here it is, I'll show you, and then you can go and do it. Or if you're lucky, you get one chance to, to, to try it before you're left on your own. In job instruction, four tries as a minimum. Fifth distinctive element is that there's immediate correction uh, for any mistake. People aren't let go uh, to make mistakes. And the last and sixth distinctive element about job instruction is that instructors use few words. So what does it look like? Here's the job instruction breakdown sheet for a task. This is often the training task that's used in a uh, training session. This document is meant as a reminder for the instructor. And you can see uh, the three columns have the three elements, the important steps, the key points, and the reasons. You can see the organization, and this helps the instructor deliver the information well. Uh, and so I wanted to show this to you uh, because we're going to be uh, referring to these job instruction breakdown sheets as a core element of how you can go fast uh, with job instruction. Let's move on. As I reflected on the, the, the two situations that I've been through where we really needed to go fast, I saw three steps, three core elements of how job instruction helps you do that. Uh, the first is that you use the job instruction breakdown sheet to actually design the work. Second, you teach every task in the process. And third, you set higher standards of performance for the learner uh, from the outset. 
So let's go through each of these three steps um, and explore uh, how they will affect you uh, and how they help you go quicker. Um, so first I, concept is you use the job instruction breakdown sheets. Here it, it's a abbreviated J, JIBS to design work. So you use the job instruction breakdown sheets to do the design, to design the work that's going to be done. And there are four key points to this. The first is that you want to involve your best operators. So you might have a task that you need to get done, a new task, you're trying to figure out how to do it. You get one of them to do the task. You get somebody else to be making notes about what's making it awkward or difficult. You have one of your other operators doing some timing to get data about how you can make the, the job go easily and quicker. Um, the, the, the general premise is you're going to run a number of experiments with different trials. Um, and so the, these roles help with that. The second key point is that you only want the, um, the work, uh, the, the design to be good enough. You don't, you're not after per perfection because sloppy success is better than perfect mediocrity. Much better to have masks going out the door uh, that might not have been, might be able to be made a little bit more efficiently, but they're being made now than to spend another month trying to figure out the perfect process. Third element, third key point, is that as you're designing the work, use cardboard and tape to do the mock-ups you need for fittings and fixtures and so on. This is a photograph uh, from a work uh, situation where the operator needed to pick up thin sheets of metal. And the challenge was that um, it was difficult to pick them up and they needed a little fixture that would let them hold it and make it easy. Well, we did the first uh, designs in cardboard uh, with tape and to, just to see, will that work? Um, and then it got refined in cardboard until it, we were comfortable that it was worth turning into something a little more solid. Uh, but you use the cardboard and tape so you can go fast because then you don't have to wait for the maintenance department or your outside contractor to make up your little uh, fitting or fixture. The fourth key point about using the job instruction breakdown sheet to design the work is that as you're running your tests, have a coach at each station because the people doing the work, you know, they're still testing it out. We haven't settled or solidified it. They won't remember all the little details and the coach can remind them as they're doing the work, kind of like providing the cues on, for, for, a, for an actor on stage um, saying, this is what's next. This is what's next. This is how long it should take. Um, so that as a, as a team, you're designing the work so that it can be done and having the coach at each station just makes it a whole lot easier. Well, the second uh, step is to use job instruction to teach all the operators and all the tasks. Here's the thing is people, when they're learning things, don't always get it right. And so if there's one of these tasks, so I mean, this model is set up with five tasks. If task three hasn't been thought through and uh, and worked out, the details worked out, then it's not going to have an 80% chance of success or a 90% chance of success. It's going to be way lower. And you can see the impact on overall success as you go through step after step. Um, it really matters to get each step successful. Um, you know, here, what this shows is 
if you get a 90% success rate at each step with a five-step process, only 60% of those operations are going to come through successfully. You can't afford to do that if you need to get this production out the door. And so every step is critical to get it uh, trained up properly. Um, and don't skip anything, even if it looks simple and trivial. Figure out what needs to be done. Um, and the, the third important step is to set higher standards of performance for the learners. We've already seen in the, in the graph on the last slide how much it matters uh, when uh, or if, if somebody's not performing super well. And uh, so what we want to do uh, in, on, is not go for your normal target that will work well if you're just introducing one new person to a line or it's an established product, it's pretty well worked out and you're just making a tweak. Here we've got new products, new processes, new people. They're people that you count on for your regular production, but now they're doing new work and you need their performance to be higher. You now people might think, well, that's gonna slow us down. But what we wanna do is, it's as if the material they were working with was super expensive. If you have parts that are $1,000 a piece, you don't want somebody doing something to them that will mess them up. Can't afford it. In this case, where time is of the essence, it's not the material so much, it's the time, the production time. Much better to take an extra five minutes to do another repetition as the learner learns and get them really solid in their task. Uh, than to put them on the line where they're messing up on one out of five pieces. Um, so sets higher standards of performance for the learners. Well, I thought it would be helpful for everyone to have a couple of examples of uh, how the impact that this can have. And I wanna talk about two the Alco paint line and Vemco assembly. And I'll tell you what each of them are as we go. So Alco uh, was ran a, a was a company that made aluminum railings and their, the changeover on their powder coating line, sorry, we always called it the paint line, but it was powder coating, took 16 minutes. And that was too long because we were doing 10 of those a day. And we challenged, uh, some of our operators to say, what can we do to get that, cut that at least in half? And in two days with, um, uh, I think we did seven different uh, trials tests. Uh, we got the changeover time down to six minutes. Um, and so what you can see on this slide at the top is uh, the last few steps from the job instruction breakdown sheet. And then down at the bottom of it, in where the red arrow is pointing, you can see we've got this second by second timeline for the two operators. It had to be that tightly choreographed. And so you can imagine as we were testing this, the, op the, the guys that we had testing this, they didn't know this by heart. They didn't know it by rote. And so having a coach was super helpful because they didn't have to worry about remembering what was the next step. They just had to execute the step. Um, and it made the trials go really well. This was good because the, the powder coating line was still running and we were doing live changeovers, um, just interrupting the regular workers uh, saying, we'll do this one. And uh, uh, so we had to get it done. We had to get it done right. Um, and having the best operators uh, in our team and uh, working, uh, having them coaching, uh, we did really cheap little uh, test stuff uh, to make it to, to, for the trials. Um, we used all those kinds of tools to help make it work. Um, 
the interesting thing was uh, the, that paint powder coating line ran for another three years. Uh, it never varied from uh, from that six seven minutes uh, over that whole time because the job instruct that we we'd worked out the details enough uh, that it was a stable uh, effort or a stable uh, procedure. Um, the other uh, example that I wanted to give you uh, was a company called Vemco. Uh, and they adopted job instruction uh, to help with their new product introduction. Uh, they're a fascinating company. They make acoustic fish tags that researchers insert under the skin of the fish uh, so they can detect location uh, for studies of fish population and fish movement. And they can be very tiny. The one that's shown here on the on the uh, the screen, uh, 22 millimeters. So that's only about that long. And they have some that are even smaller, under a centimeter long, sort of three eighths of an inch. Um, so it's a complex, tricky process to do the assembly and testing. And Vemco, when they introduced job instruction, saw three big benefits. First, as they were introducing new products, their production started six weeks sooner than it had, or faster than it had before. Second time was that they reduced their training time for new people from three months down to one month. And the third thing that benefit that they got was that they reduced their documentation by 50, the time to do documentation by 50%. These are really remarkable uh, achievements, uh, but the only thing that they were doing that was fundamentally different is they were using job instruction to help them design the work and then to document it and using it to train the people who were moving into these production lines. Um, so really powerful uh, achievement. In summary, uh, I hope that out of the, this, you can see that uh, using the training within industry job instruction, you can implement faster, train faster, reduce your scrap, and generate better performance for your board, for, for the business. When you need to retool to respond to an urgent need like COVID-19, or it could be a market change, speed is your friend, and job instruction can help you achieve that. So today doesn't actually tell you how to do job instruction or how to use it. I wanted more to give you a sense of how helpful it can be, how much of an impact it can have, it can have when you're trying to bring a new product online in a company. And so if you and your team are trying to adapt your production facilities to produce whatever it is that the folks combating the COVID-19 uh, virus need, uh, this can be a super helpful approach. We've had to go fairly quickly uh, just because of the time we have. Uh, I suspect that some of you will have questions. Uh, and so if you have questions, whether it's about training within industry itself, or job instruction or the presentation, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, one of the things that's been really fun in the last few, uh, last month, is we've been learning how to do uh, remote training uh, on job instruction uh, for writing job instruction breakdown sheets, uh, providing remote help uh, for people who are using them. Uh, and so that's all possible, and I welcome your. Uh, welcome you getting in touch with me. Uh, you can reach me at the uh, address there, hally at firstlinetraining.ca, or give me a call at 604-866-1502. Uh, and if you want to learn about or order my book, uh, you can go to becomingthesupervisor.com. Um, Skylar, that's the presentation. Uh, to everyone listening, thank you so much for your time and attention. 
uh, look forward to uh, your questions and to the conversations that will happen as we all do our part uh, to uh, deal with this uh, virus. Uh, and I wish everyone, your, you and your families, your colleagues, uh, health and safety uh, in the weeks ahead. Skylar? Yes, thank you for facilitating our session today, Hugh. Just a reminder that today's session was recorded. You will receive an email shortly with a link to view the recording. Please share this throughout your organization and perhaps even use it as a lunch and learn for your team. Thanks again, Hugh, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's session. Have a great day.